How do I tell a one night stand that I have his kid? Okay to keep it simple my son's baby daddy was a one night stand. He was a trucker who got snowed in, we met at a bar and hooked up, didn't exchange contact info, I was just bored, lonely, and temporarily insane from the pandemic and was being risky and stupid as shit and didn't bother with protection. Love my kid though, no regrets there, glad I didn't get an STD. When I realized I was pregnant I thought long and hard about it and decided to keep him, thanks Catholic guilt, it's not strong enough to stop me from having sex but strong enough to stop me from getting an abortion lol. JK I love my kiddo and kept him because I wanted him. I make a decent living, child support would help but we can get by without it. I didn't expect to ever see the baby daddy again and I was okay with that. Kiddo has my last name, I didn't know his. I was fine with being a single mom and dealing with everything myself, tbh some of my friends have shit baby daddies and they and their kids are better off without them, I feel like kiddo and I are better off on our own than trying to add someone to the mix anyway. At least that's what I told myself. But my friend who works at the gas station just happened to see him. She knows his name and race, saw his name on his ID, her nosy ass made sure to confirm it was the same guy and ask if he remembered me, asked for his number on my behalf and passed it on to me. I'm sure he is flattered thinking some random hookup talked up his skills to her friends to the extent that they remembered his name LMAO. Anyway thanks to her nosy ass I can't claim innocence anymore and am forced to make a decision. So, first of all, do I say anything? I know it's technically supposed to be the right thing to do but tbh I have heard so many baby daddy horror stories. It's to the point that if I'd gotten pregnant from a hookup with a guy I would reasonably expect to see again, but not know well enough to trust, I might actually abort because I wouldn't want my kid to go through what some kids have gone through. If I say something this guy can sue for custody or guardianship, I can't bear the thought of letting my baby go to some stranger and not being around. Hell he can't even talk and couldn't tell me if something happened, not that I think anything would or that the trucker will want custody in the first place but who even knows these days? On the other hand how can I deprive my kiddo of a father? It would be one thing if, once he was older, I could honestly say I didn't know where his father was but I can't possibly lie to him about that and I can't imagine telling him I could have found his father but I was too scared. So I'm leaning towards telling him but how do I even do that? Can I just text him the news and get it over with? Should I try to see if he can meet up next time he passes by and tell him face to face? Is there any kind of legal shit I should be aware of with this kind of thing? Yeah in case you couldn't tell I went from giving no fucks during the pandemic to giving too many fucks about everything as a mom and no matter what plan I make I just keep thinking of the ways things might backfire and somehow hurt my kiddo, I know I am way overthinking probably but please I just need someone to tell me what to do. Update October 28th, 2023. This was my first post, it didn't get a lot of comments but I wanted to let you guys know how it turned out. I forgot my password for my first throwaway so I had to make a new one but it's still me. So a while back I posted here asking for advice about how to tell my baby daddy I have his kid. After figuring out how to run a background check and seeing no criminal history I thought I would try to meet him, do a vibe check, see if he seems cool. Hook up with him again if I need to in order to get to know him. LOL. Anyway. Turns out I didn't need to go that far. The guy texted me that he was stopping by in town, we met up for breakfast. I was like, cool, promising, breakfast usually doesn't lead to a hookup, so he actually wants to get to know me which makes it much easier for me to get to know him. We made some typical casual date small talk. Then he asks do I have kids? I tell him one. He asks how old. I say one. He's like is he one and one month? He figured it out on his own. When my friend who never met him recognized him by his name and insisted he get in contact with me, apparently, he was like it's either a baby or a very serious STD. So I just came clean and told him everything. I haven't introduced him to kiddo yet. But I showed him a picture. He agrees that kiddo is the cutest kiddo ever and looks like him. We are getting a paternity test. He is definitely the baby daddy because he's the only Asian guy I've been with and kiddo is definitely part Asian. But I don't blame him for checking since I know some women will lie about things like that. 
He doesn't seem like he doesn't believe me, he just wants to make sure which is fair. Baby daddy says if kiddo is his he's fine with paying child support and just having supervised visitation until I trust him more. He lives in his truck apparently so no judge would give him any custody until that changed. So that's how it is. I didn't really get the choice to decide on my own terms whether to introduce them or not, but so far it all seems to be working out. Additional comment from OOP with her permission to be posted here. A lot of people are really struggling to understand why I was so worried about my baby daddy, I will use whatever words I want to use, y'all can deal, and whatever risk he might pose to my son, and why I would trust a guy enough to have sex with him but then not want him around my kid. I imagine a lot of you are parents but let me try to explain. My son is one year old. He is totally helpless, he is totally dependent on me. I care about him way more than I ever cared about myself. I used to ride a motorcycle, do I anymore? No, I sold it because I don't want to leave him without a mom. I used to hook up with strangers, do I anymore? No, taking risks is a completely different ball game when I have someone else to worry about besides myself, and also I have no time for that lol. Every single decision I make is now filtered through the lens of how could this affect kiddo. Now when I first realized I was pregnant, I never thought I would see his father again, everything I did was under the assumption I would be doing it alone. Which I knew would make things harder on me in many ways but on the other hand it meant I would never have to see my baby cry because daddy broke a promise again. It was what it was, pros and cons. I knew I'd have to explain to my son someday that I didn't know how to find his father, I was prepared for that. What I wasn't prepared for, was ever having to make the decision of introducing my son to his father or not. That is a whole different ball game. It was like the rug was pulled out from under me. I couldn't say, oh, it is what it is, pros and cons anymore. I'd have to make a decision. And my son would have to live with whatever decision I made. That wasn't something I took lightly. Of course I would rather that my son have a good father than not. Two loving parents are better than one. But I didn't know. It was impossible to tell how things would work out in the future. All I could think was if I tell this guy, he can take my son. If I tell this guy, he can take my son. A judge can award him custody of my son and I won't be able to do anything about it. I don't know how to describe how terrifying that thought is. The thought of my helpless, innocent, baby being outside my reach. If something bad were to happen to him during that time he couldn't even tell me. It's not that I thought something bad would happen. I'm not anti-men or anti-trucker or anything like that. I don't think all men are evil. It was just this idea that, once I tell the baby daddy, I've done something I can't undo and anything might happen. You can think I'm horrible, selfish, a narcissist, the worst kind of female, whatever. None of that matters to me, what's best for my son is the only deciding factor. And in case you didn't realize, I eventually did make the decision to reach out to the baby daddy. I did want to get to know him a bit before saying anything. But when he figured it out, I didn't lie. I could have but in the end I decided kiddo deserved to know his dad and if I lied right then I could be throwing away that chance. Since he clearly only agreed to meet me because he figured out what happened. I don't feel like I did anything wrong by being cautious about it. Anyway. Hopefully that clears things up, y'all might still not like me or understand me, but that's how I feel. Update number 2 November 11th, 2023. Some people asked for more updates on my story. This update isn't very exciting but tbh I didn't expect any of this to be very exciting to strangers outside of the handful of people who originally gave me advice. I'll be posting updates here from now until I don't feel like it anymore. Anyway, the paternity test came back positive, duh, and baby daddy, I should probably start calling him a fake name, I'm gonna call him Steve from now on because of someone's comment that made me laugh, immediately flew to my place and showed up on my porch with a dozen roses. He confessed that he had never stopped thinking about me since our first encounter and I confessed the same. We immediately went to go make another baby. He then proposed marriage and we are planning our wedding and honeymoon in Paris. But then while we were at the store picking out a wedding cake, a team of assassins attacked the bakery and we had to flee. 
It turns out he is a billionaire in the mafia and he was only pretending to be a trucker as a cover but his enemies found him, now we are on the run and I am pregnant with our next baby named Steve Jr. It really sucks to be on the run while pregnant, I gotta stop and pee all the time but assassins keep popping up at the gas stations. JK JK sorry it is just amusing to me that people are invested in my life, I couldn't resist the drama. Okay, here's the real update. The paternity test came back positive and Steve and I have been texting back and forth and talking on the phone. We still need to figure out a good time to meet up so that hasn't happened yet and I don't know when it will. Apparently Steve passes by my town a lot but not always at a convenient time to stop for a visit. Anyway I've found out a little bit more about him as a person and told him more about me, just getting to know each other, I've also sent him every picture of kiddo, I'm still gonna call my son kiddo since I actually call him that IRL, if you don't like it deal, I could find and pretty much told him the entire story of kiddo's life up to this point down to every mundane detail. Steve has been pretty mellow about everything so far and doesn't really seem either upset or excited about anything, but I guess since he figured out what happened a while ago he doesn't have much reason to be shocked. I'm nervous but also excited. Obviously, if everything works out I'm going to be thrilled that kiddo gets to have a dad. I don't really have any specific concerns that things won't work out. I'm just nervous in general because I don't know what's going to happen and becoming a mom made me a paranoid wreck. Miscellaneous things. Steve says he doesn't have any other kids, to his knowledge. But he usually uses protection, that was an out of character reckless moment for both of us. So he most likely doesn't. Steve asked me frankly if I was intentionally trying to get pregnant that night. It might have seemed that way because I told him I had condoms and then I couldn't find one. But no I legit just forgot where they were and in the heat of the moment we were both drunk slash stupid enough to carry on anyway rather than putting our clothes back on and going out to buy some. I found out Steve's ethnicity. To put it simply, he's mixed, I'm not going to list all his ethnicities because that would start to get too specific. He speaks the language of one of his ethnicities as a second language and he sent me some YouTube channels that have some children's songs in that language so kiddo can be exposed to it so we've been listening to those, I think it's super cool. Some of my friend's kids, who I babysit, are now super into it. Maybe they'll all grow up bilingual in, insert name of language here, in the middle of, insert name of mostly white small town in a mostly white state here. Some people have pointed out that it's going to be important for kiddo to have other people in his life that are connected to his culture on his father's side. I will admit, this isn't something I gave a lot of thought to and you aren't wrong. Something that kind of hit me was all the comments about how unusual it is to see an Asian trucker. To be honest. I never thought of that, yeah if I hear the word trucker I'll always imagine a fat white guy, I don't mean this in an offensive way, but I didn't really think anything of meeting an Asian trucker. Seeing all the comments made me think, like, what if my son wants to be a trucker when he grows up? Are people going to say it's weird because he's Asian? That's not right. He should be able to be whatever he wants without people thinking it's weird. I don't care if he wants to be a trucker, mechanic, ballerina, pro athlete, cop, waiter, none of the above, all of the above, like, I know the comments weren't poorly intentioned but the idea of my son ever hearing that it's weird for him to do something because he's Asian kind of broke me. I know it's not the same but I grew up hearing that I was weird to do the things I loved because I'm a girl. I already decided long ago my son can be as masculine or feminine as he wants and if anyone has shit to say about it they would have to go through me. But then there's this whole other angle I never considered that he will probably experience and I don't know anything about it. So, yeah. I'm glad he will have his dad in his life, and really just more family in general. Steve hasn't told them about kiddo yet but he says he's not worried they'll be disapproving or anything he's just waiting for the right time to break the news. My family is totally disapproving and I've pretty much stopped talking to my parents since their man I refused to give kiddo up for adoption to my aunt and uncle. I am totally rambling now. Uh, I guess the other thing people commented about was child support? Turns out Steve isn't doing very great financially right now and his family is going through some serious hardships that he's been helping them with, so he asked if he can pay me back pay child support later. I just told him not to worry about it. I really don't need back pay, I don't need child support at all, 
I don't want to wrangle any money from him and any money he gives me for kiddo it should be because he wants to. I give kiddo stuff because I love him and want to take care of him, if his dad gives him anything it should be for the same reason, not because he has to. I also told him, just in case, if he doesn't want to be kiddo's dad he can walk away right now and never contact me again, I won't go after him in court or anything, I don't want to introduce kiddo to any father who thinks of him as a burden or an obligation. He assured me he genuinely does want to meet him and be a part of his life, so, that's good. Anyway yeah that's the update for now, I'll post again when Steve gets a chance to come and meet kiddo. By the way on my last update I think I got a little carried away arguing with people who apparently didn't even read my post. This time I'm going to try to make an effort not to do that. I was a little caught off guard but now I'm prepared in case any of these updates get a lot of comments again and I think I'm more mentally prepared to just let people be stupid without it getting to me. Basically what I mean is, I'll no longer be replying to people who say I hate men, because I don't, if I hated men why would I have a son, or I hid my son from his father for a year, or accusing me of anything else that I didn't do. We have a visiting date set, November 24th, 2023. It's Wednesday the 6th. He'll leave Saturday. We have a few, low-key, activities that we might do depending on the weather. And then Steve will try to stop briefly and visit as often as he can when he passes by. But he wants to have more time to get to know kiddo for the first time he is meeting him so he got a few days off work. So yeah. Pretty exciting and I'm kinda nervous, for no particular reason. I'll post about how it goes after. In other news, it's been snowing and it has been the cutest thing ever seeing kiddo's reaction to it and him waddling through the snow in his little snow booties. Also he loves sweet potatoes apparently. The visit went well, December 19th, 2023. Hello to all friends and haters, here's another update. It's pretty late because I've had a lot going on and haven't really felt like writing everything up and tbh the amount of haters in the comments have been a bit overwhelming and I know I'm most likely gonna get more. IDK it's weird but I feel like this mix of excitement and dread about posting and I considered not posting, but honestly, I like attention. So the excitement went out and I'm gonna post. Anyway. It went well. We're going all in on the co-parenting thing. We have a plan and everything. We're gonna stick to occasional visits and frequent FaceTime for now then revisit other options later when kiddo is a little older. Maybe Steve's situation will have changed by then and he will have a permanent residence somewhere to take kiddo for longer visits. But for a while it'll just be short visits where he comes over here. Highlight Reel When Steve saw Kiddo in person for the first time his face broke out in the brightest smile. It was heartwarming. And really reassuring. Kiddo took to him right away, he is really interested in people in general so I thought he probably would. But yeah I didn't know I had been worried that Steve wasn't really interested and just felt like he was obligated to be in Kiddo's life, I think I thought that because he didn't really express much emotion about finding out about Kiddo but now I think that might just be how his personality is. Anyway. That smile was so bright and earnest that all my worries melted away in that moment. I think he even looked a little watery eyed when he held him. He brought Kiddo seven stuffies, mostly teddy bears, from different states he passed through since finding out about him. He says someday he is going to collect a stuffy for every state for him. Kiddo's favorite is a stuffed octopus from California. Steve says he's going to bring Kiddo keychains for the next visit though since Kiddo kept grabbing at Steve's keys. I don't think Kiddo exactly understands that Steve is his dad yet. I introduced him as dad but he hasn't called him that yet, but he doesn't say many words yet anyway, I wasn't really expecting him to. He kinda just acted like he'd act around any other friend of mine. Like, happy to see him, okay to be held by him or sit with him for a bit, but after a while wants to go back to me. That's all normal I guess. He doesn't know him yet. But it does make me feel kinda sad that his dad is a stranger and wonder what things would be like if I just asked for Steve's number, but I know it will eventually be okay and kiddo will get to know and love his dad. We mostly stayed at my place and relaxed. But we went to the park and the lake a few times, and we went to the zoo. It was Kiddo's first time going. I wish I could explain the look on his face because it was so adorable. 
He is at such a cute age where he gets totally fascinated by basically everything, every new animal he would like, look at it and point at it and look back at me. Like, holy shit mom, are you seeing this shit? It was so cute. Kiddo and I got to meet some of Steve's relatives over FaceTime. They all seem like super chill, warm, and nice people and were super welcoming. They're going through some serious shit right now but they were super positive and kind anyway. I am so glad Kiddo is going to have good relatives in his life. I'm keeping most of my family at an arm's length RN for the sake of my and Kiddo's sanity but like I am so happy he is going to have aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents. The child support thing, I think, is resolved. Steve gave me $200 cash and said he'll give more when he is in a better position. I can definitely find a good use for whatever he can afford to give. I asked if he wanted to go to the court and work out some of official agreement and like actually make him the legal father but he was like no this is fine, I trust you to handle things between ourselves. So it looks like that's what we're going to do. He'll give what he can give when he can give it. He's not going to be able to visit for Christmas but he's going to come by sometime before Christmas and New Year's and we'll have a small celebration. It's not like kiddo knows when Christmas is actually supposed to be so it works out okay. Okay here's the thing that some of you are probably going to judge me for. But Steve and I actually did end up hooking up again. But we used protection this time. In my defense, I hadn't had sex in like two years. I'm never again going to hook up with a random stranger or hook up without using protection. And just to be extra safe I'm going to try to go on birth control too. But I don't want to give up sex forever just because I'm a mom now. So, whatever, judge away. The only thing I'm worried about is if things end up affecting kiddo somehow. Because where things stand it looks like Steve and I are going to just be friends with benefits and not get in an actual relationship. Maybe that will change someday but for now that's what we both want. Anyway. I know people whose parents were married, divorced, never married, whatever. And in every category I know some of them turned out fine and some didn't. I don't think there's any one situation that's best for every family. But I've never actually met anyone whose parents were FWB or met anyone in a FWB relationship who is co-parenting with them. I don't think that's a very common situation. Maybe in poly situations it's more common? I don't know any poly couples in real life though so that doesn't change much. Anyway I don't know why it would be a bad thing for kiddo really but maybe I'm overlooking something. I mean I guess if one of us wanted to end things it could get messy, maybe? I'm not the drama queen type and he doesn't seem like it either and that could affect kiddo. But that happens to actual couples too. And probably even worse. Anyway yeah that's basically everything. New update. Hi again reddit. I got a couple more people checking in, did this get reposted again somewhere, and I figured I'd just give a general update even though I once again don't have anything dramatic to share. Steve has come to visit a few times since the first time but hasn't ever been able to stay for more than 1.5 days. However we're planning a longer visit for fall, maybe Thanksgiving or maybe sooner. He says if he ever gets snowed in again he'll try to do it in this town. But so far, no luck with that. Also, next time he goes to visit his family he wants me and kiddo to come along but doesn't know when there will be a good time for that, maybe next year. He stops at my town for gas often and goes to chat with my friend, I'm gonna call her Courtney, who works at the truck stop who gave me his number, and he's been giving her stuff to give me to give kiddo. So kiddo has a bunch more stuffies, keychains, and toy cars now. It's honestly way more toys than he needs slash has room for. But the sentiment is sweet. Anyway here's a cute story, it was Steve's birthday last month and so I got a card, I wrote a birthday note, kiddo colored on it, and we left it with Courtney to give Steve for whenever he came by. Courtney's coworker gave it to him two days after his birthday, because now the whole truck stop knows him, and me, and my son, and the whole story, and he texted me saying it was a nice surprise and made him less lonely on the road. I was going to make cupcakes or something too but I didn't know when he'd be by and I wasn't sure if they'd go bad. I didn't know it was his birthday until like two days before so I didn't have time to plan a gift and I wasn't sure what to get him anyway since he doesn't have much room in his truck and he basically has what he needs already. 
my friends and I were talking about it, and Courtney said one of those dashboard hula dancer things, which was a joke but then we googled it and saw there's a website where you can order custom bobbleheads. So my other friend was like oh my god get in the stripper one with your face but, no LMAO. He and I are still hooking up, but I don't want my face on a naked bobblehead in his truck. But apparently you can get one that looks like your kid, I think that one might be a bit more appropriate and so that's what kiddo and I are going to get him for Father's Day. Iway, other stuff people have asked about. Child support is still informal, he Venmo's me money or gives me cash. It's all in a savings account for kiddo, that I'll use if he ever wants to do expensive hobbies or go to summer camp or whatever, or if there's ever an emergency need, or for trade school or college in the future. As I mentioned, he and I are still FWB, so far so good on the no one catching feelings thing. I'm not much of a romantic relationship person, I don't know why, I like the idea of romance in movies and stuff but anytime anything comes close to developing that way in real life for me I just get super uncomfortable and turned off, and I don't think Steve is much of a monogamy person so that works out. Kiddo and I have had short rides in the passenger seat of his truck. I think Kiddo likes the vantage point looking out the window. Also, speaking of trucks, my sister and her kids might be moving in with me. It's for sad reasons since she and her husband are on a break and are probably going to divorce but not sure yet. But it's good for me and Kiddo because 1. Kiddo can get to know his cousins and 2. My sister will be able to watch Kiddo at night which means I can get my diesel tech certification at night school. I've already absorbed a lot since I've helped my coworkers out with stuff but once I get certified I'll get paid more. And I can help Steve out next time he needs repairs on his truck. I still don't talk to my parents much but I seem to be running out of excuses to avoid family reunions and almost likely be forced to go camping with everyone in the summer. Also, we had a good Easter. Went to church with my friend and there was an egg hunt for the kids. The eggs had Bible verses instead of candy but kiddos still had fun. Then my friend, her son, and I came back to my place, had brunch, and did an egg hunt with actual candy in the eggs. The kids were a lot more excited about that. Hope everyone else is having a good Easter slash Passover slash Ramadan slash whatever.